Whale pee funnel. Yeah, a new University of Vermont study shows that whales transport huge quantities of nutrients across oceans through their urine. This movement of nitrogen and other nutrients is vital to the growth of phytoplankton that provide food for sharks and other fish and invertebrates. Whales undertake the longest migration of any mammal in the world. The study dubbing it the Great Conveyor Belt or the Great Whale Pea Funnel calculates that the whales transport about 4,000 tons of nitrogen and more than 45,000 tons of biomass a year to low nutrient coastal areas in the tropics and subtropics. So now, now, some corner of your brain will always remember that there's a whale pee funnel. This is the latest in science news. This is Mind Blow. So this seems like a big deal. Use of bone tool technology was just pushed back over a million years thanks to a discovery of bone artifacts in Tanzania. Archaeologists in Olduvai Gorge discovered a range of bone tools thought to have been made by an older human species called Homo habilis, known as the Alduan people 1.5 million years ago. Already known for their stone tools dating back 2.5 million years ago, this new discovery shows their tool tech was more complex and sophisticated than we previously knew. In this discovery, 27 bones showed signs of being deliberately broken and flaked to create sharp tools, suggesting also that this may have played a part in the technological transition of the Oldowan culture to the Acheulean culture that followed. The tools mostly consist of hippo and elephant bones probably used for butchering to make hippo hamburgers and elephant steaks. Okay, scientists at NeuroRestore are combining rehabilitation robotics with spinal stimulation to restore movement in people with spinal cord injuries. While traditional rehabilitation robotics continue to improve, without active muscle engagement, their effectiveness is limited. So they've developed a system that integrates an implanted spinal cord neuroprosthesis with rehabilitation robotics. This device delivers electrical pulses to stimulate muscles together with robotic movements, which results in natural and coordinated muscle activity. This not only enhances immediate mobility, but long-term recovery. This technology relies on a fully implanted spinal cord stimulator that activates motor neurons more efficiently by mimicking natural nerve signals. They then use devices like treadmills, stationary bikes, and exoskeletons to ensure the stimulation is precisely timed with each movement. In a study of five people with spinal cord injuries, the combination of electrical epidural stimulation and robotics resulted in immediate and sustained muscle activation. Some also improved their voluntary movements after the stimulation was turned off. This seems good. Meanwhile, a man that was paralyzed by a stroke has been able to move and pick up objects with a robotic hand using only his thoughts. While similar technology has been shown before, it only lasted a few days. This latest one was demonstrated demonstrated over a seven month period. Previous attempts at this technology yielded impressive results, but just not for long. Probably because the brain changes in response to new conditions, like being in control of a limb after long paralysis. They investigated how brain activity in animals shifted as they learned. They implanted sensors on the surface of the brain of two paralyzed individuals to see local activity and told the participants to imagine making different movements. Eventually, the pattern of movement activity stayed constant, but the locations within the brain where it was happening, moved. Participants imagined making movements with their hand and fingers for two weeks with sensors recording all of the activity. When the patterns were transmitted to a robotic arm, they moved in the desired manner, but without the precision needed for everyday tasks. With practice, this improved while AI trained on records of their brain activity got better at interpreting the instructions. The individual was eventually able to open cupboard doors and fill cups with water. After not using the arm for months, the participant and the AI needed just a 15 minute refresher to be able to repeat these same movements. This is very very science fiction and very cool. Japanese space agency JAXA's Martian Moons Exploration Space Probe hopes to be studying two Martian moons and collect material samples from Phobos for the first time. The findings will help us better understand the formation of the moons and the planets in our solar system. The mission will carry the rover from the DLR and the French space agency CNES. The project is expected to be launched from the Japanese spaceport Tanegashima in 2026, and the the rover is set to land on Phobos in 2029 and arrive back on Earth in 2031. I just like saying 
Phobos. The robots are jogging. I repeat, the robots are jogging. With a moving speed of 2 meters per second, Engine AI's robotics PM01 robot can not only sprint forward, but can also perform a front flip. The company claims that the PM01 boasts the world's first natural walking gait and exceptional mobility. They also say it's the most intelligent humanoid robot that Engine AI has developed to date. And now here's Magic Bot's humanoid bot also running with a human gait. Apparently, everyone's humanoid robots are learning to run now, so get ready to run for your life. All right, here's one more humanoid robot. There are a ton of these right now. The Neo Gamma looks to be your in-home personal assistant and companion. Neo's knit suit is soft to the touch and flexible. Neo is apparently able to not only tidy around your home, but deep clean as well as provide conversation and tutoring. Its hands are designed to handle important jobs around the house, and its tendon-driven motion provides soft and quiet movement. Currently, you can join the waitlist for more on Neo Gamma. The point is, the robots are coming. And now a news report on the harmful addiction of Nintendo from 1988. Well, I think the biggest problem is that the, the stimulus value of the video games is so high that the children are likely to want to spend a great deal of time involved with them. And then the parents start having concerns about whether this is the kind of activity they want the child to be involved in for four or five hours a night. I remember every day after school, I used to rush home to play my Nintendo, and I'd just spend hours and hours and just play it all just from when I got home from school until I went to bed. <laughs> I know this kid, he's, he's 13 years old, and he plays it all the time. Like. He's like how Zach used to be. He pl he plays it, goes home, plays Nintendo, plays it before dinner, eats dinner, goes back, plays Nintendo, plays it till he goes to bed. The parents worry the most where the children are, are clearly um, uh, mo more involved with this than anything else and uh, drawing back, uh, withdrawing from other activities that might be growthful and, and good for them.